I say industrial transformation or energy transition, how many here has a sense of urgency? Hands up. That's a good one. If I say that we need new types of partnerships, how many of you are thinking in terms of new striking out in new types of partnerships, either across industry or down the value chain or in your supply chains? All right. So I work at the World Economic Forum. I'm a program manager inside the Center for Energy and Materials. I lead a program on industrial transformation. We've been working for many years on both sectoral initiatives that we are trying to, to help steel, aluminium, chemicals, cement and concrete to transform. A lot of focus on industrial decarbonization. Our vision on the energy side is that we want to transform the energy system to a fit for 50 energy uh, system. And uh, when we talk about energy, we talk about energy security, we talk about just transition, and we talk about the sustainability side. We call this the energy triangle, and for us it's very important to have sort of a, I wouldn't say necessarily 100% equal balance, but we saw over the last two to three years now, when we don't think through the energy security side, we also end up in, in great difficulties and great challenges in, 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 uh, globally and, and regionally. Um, and we also look at topics such as job creation and uh, economic development and improving health, and uh, for example, through less air pollution. Um, in practice, uh, as I said, we have a number of initiatives. We, we, all the work we do is in this space of collective action, multi-stakeholder, cross-industry. Uh, we are not a consultancy. Uh, we we uh, really try to be uh, sort of improving the state of the world by driving very tangible and impactful initiatives. On the energy side, uh, we obviously focus a lot on the energy supply side. We heard here, you know, we have to focus a lot more and scale up and accelerate a lot more when it comes to production of clean power, but also access to clean power. Uh, so a lot of work over the last uh, two years has also focused on the demand side of the, uh, of the energy, where we think we can do an a lot, lot more uh, work around energy efficiency and the, the, how we use energy. We have a lot of waste. We use way too much energy per unit of GDP. And there's so much more we can do around energy intensity, both in industry, but also in transport and in the built environment. Uh, Another, another side of, of the work we do is that we utilize what we call the key enablers around the energy transition, which is policy, finance, digitalization, uh, technology, uh, workforce, and other enablers that we think each, each sector or each initiative have different priorities, and you utilize the key enablers as they fit. So on the industry cluster side, we launched this initiative uh, two years ago at COP26, and you could say it comes, to a certain extent, it comes out of the vertical work we've been doing on different sectors, and most of the time you end up in an industrial cluster. Uh, if we think through how land is sown, we have residential areas, commercial areas, nature reserves, and industrial areas. So it's not strange that we end up in, and this is how most of the planet is sown, and it's not strange that you end up in industry clusters. But what we don't think about is that now they are, in many cases, as Luke was pointing out this morning as well, the port of Antwerp is now a key driver for a lot of where this transition needs to happen, a lot of where this industry transformation needs to happen. So we, we see that the clusters as units are phenomenal entities to strengthen the decolonization work, to create jobs, and to grow GDP. And this is also how we measure the progress over this initiative. So again, it's emissions, jobs, and GDP. And I'll come back to that in a, in a second. 
I think many of us know that industry represents 30% of global emissions. And most of these emissions are in industry clusters. So again, if you work from a cluster perspective, you have, you have an enormous lever to utilize and unleash when it comes to industrial decarbonization. For the cl clusters to progress, for example, on industry uh, decarbonization, they need to work together. And this is one of the discoveries we make. You know, these many of these clusters were never set up to drive collaboration. They, you know, most companies inside these industrialized zones, they mind their own business. It's a bit like any other apartment building. You know a few of your neighbors, you don't know all your neighbors, and you definitely don't collaborate with all your neighbors. Now it's getting towards a situation where you need to think through what is the collaboration going to look like for the entire cluster. And you need to start with a shared ambition and a shared vision for the cluster. You need a lot of buy-in from the, the corporates who are there. But you also need to have a governance structure that is, is, is functional, that, that is able to lead. That's another discovery we make, is that many clusters, they are not set up as port of Antwerp. Many, many clusters, and we look at thousands of clusters globally, they quite simply lack uh, governance or have a very, very weak governance structure. So it's not, the, and they, again, they were never set up to drive collaboration inside the, the, the cluster, and they were even less uh, set up to drive real transformation or, or transitioning uh, of these clusters. So we, we support this type of work. This is like the first area where, where we engage with the clusters, is around collaboration, partnerships, governance, and so on. So this is the first area. We work on other topics with the clusters. So these are the areas where we are working with these clusters that we engage uh, around policy. We do policy deep dive. We also do uh, joint work on finding s solutions, for example, for shared infrastructure, uh, financial solutions for shared infrastructure. <clears throat> and we, we uh, look at what are the technologies needed to transition uh, an industry clusters. So that's, that's in a nutshell is our approach. Uh, we, we do a lot of sharing between the clusters, as we heard from, again from Luke this morning. Uh, we do uh, insights reports, and we try to convey between the clusters what different types of public and private collaboration can look like. So our ambition is to build uh, a collaborative platform of, of, uh, of the, the vision we have from the initiative point of view is to, to put together 100 clusters over the next two years and create a collaborative platform between, between clusters. And on the technology focus, we are very agnostic from our point of view. We just point out that there are around four key technologies that are needed to uh, decarbonize an industry cluster. Uh, what we see and I think we heard a little bit of this also this morning, is we are heading towards a multi-fuel uh, plus electrification of both the mobility and processes future. So if you think about what, what, what especially on the transport side is very, and, and on the feedstock side, is obviously very oil uh, and petrochemical oriented today, but we are now seeing the build out of, of of the, the, the green fuels coming. And this is one of the topics that we are now looking at. How do we address this from building what we call a global green network? And how do we avoid that individual clusters build, for example, infrastructure that may not be suitable for, for, uh, for the future? Uh, on this, we work with other initiatives. I mentioned the First Movers Coalition. We also have sister initiatives on clean power grids and ele electrification. And I mentioned also earlier the acceleration of clean hydrogen initiative. So we work together with these and with the clusters and the corporations involved in the clusters initiative. So today we have 21, uh, sorry, it's 20 here, but we actually 21 uh, industry clusters that has joined. Uh, 17 of these clusters has port, so they are port-anchored clusters. Uh, we have clusters in the United States, in the United Kingdom, Europe, uh, China, in Asia, Indonesia in particular, Australia. Uh, so five regions, 
And uh, again, as I mentioned, we, we measure the, the clusters over emissions, jobs, and GDP. And these are also topics that now, after two years of work, these uh, challenges, I would say, are the ones coming up now from the clusters. There are very similar ch challenging challenges around skills, attracting uh, skills, uh, 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 and there are challenges around how do you generate demand for clean power. Uh, another topic is digitalization of these clusters. To be able to measure emissions or monetize emissions, for example, you need to have a digital solution. And finally, I mentioned already green network. Uh, we are discussing with these clusters uh, if, if they want to work more closely on, on, on setting standards around green networking. And finally, in addition to those very tangible topics around jobs and digitalization and uh, demand for energy, what is coming out as challenges is mindset, trust, uh, governance, magnitude of the change and the regulatory framework. We still have large economies that don't have any policy at all, like in India, uh, on industry clusters and or policy is very scattered or fragmented. 